Hi everyone, Nigel Saunders here. It is the first sunny day of 2019, season six, here in the Bonsai Zone. It's 12 noon now. The day is just starting to heat up. You can see it's 27.3 degrees Celsius in the plant room with 69% humidity. I finished making all the ingredients for my Martian soil. So I took them down to the scales and I got them all weighed out so I have the right proportions to make a fairly accurate Martian simulant. In the last video, I was making my aluminum oxide and this comes in at 7.2% of the Martian soil. And this is the ingredient that I had the least of. So this kind of determines how, how much quantity of soil I can get using this much aluminum oxide. I ended up with four ounces of aluminum oxide. So that means my total soil quantity could be 55.5 ounces. I've got 27 and a half ounces of silicon oxide. I have 9.93 ounces of, a, of an iron oxide. I have 3.7 ounces of calcium oxide and 4.27 ounces of magnesium oxide. So that's the main ingredients and I'll mix them together now. I'll mix everything together in this stainless steel bucket. So here I go. I'll start with my sand or my silicon oxide. The next ingredient will be my aluminum oxide, my magnesium oxide, my calcium oxide, and last, my iron oxide. And then I'll give that a good stir. All right, I'll give it a stir. It'll be interesting to see what color the final soil comes out. Well, it's not coming out very red so far because my iron oxide is in fairly big chunks. It's not a fine powder that mixes in. So my plan is to add water to this to make it like cement. And then I'm going to pour it into my little oven, my toaster oven again, and bake it into chunks. And then break up the chunks into like a turfus type soil particle. So it has, so it's not a fine powder like this. If you were to plant trees in a fine powder like this and you water it, it's just gonna turn to like clay or mud or cement. It's um, not very good for tree root growth. So that's the reason I'm gonna add water. It is getting a bit of a pink tinge to it, I noticed. That's the reason I'm gonna add water and then uh, kind of bake it again to get a good soil particle size. I don't wanna you know, I want these trees to live in this soil. I don't want to make a poor quality soil just for the sake of mixing the right ingredients. So it has a bit of a pinkish tinge to it. And I think as I break up those iron oxide chunks more, it'll get a redder color, more like the color of Mars. I noticed the pigment from the red is really strong. If you get it on your fingers, it uh, it's a very, very fine powder. Here's the color of the soil. After mixing it up, I still have chunks of iron oxide in there that uh, will probably break down further. I think there's one right there. Yeah. That'll darken the reddish color, but you can see it is a nice kind of reddish color now. I've heated up some hot water, so I'm going to add it to my Martian soil to make sort of a Martian soil cement. So here I go. I'll add a little bit at a time. There is some articles on the internet about making bricks out of Martian soil where they find just by compressing the soil with a slight bonding agent um, that you can make some really good high quality strong bricks out of it. So here's my stuff with water in it. It certainly does look like cement. 
I need a bit more water. So I don't know if I bake this, if it'll form, you know, particles like turfus, um, if it'll bond together or after it dries, if it'll go back to a powder. But I have a feeling, just based on my, the way this is going together, that it'll stay, it'll harden into a, uh, like a rock-like substance. But uh, that's just me guessing, I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong, who knows. That is a really nice Mars red color. I really like that, that's amazing. Bet you my Curiosity Rover would like to take a sample of that. Okay, I think that's mixed up now. That's good stuff. So if you were to plant a tree in this, I really doubt they would grow. I mean, there's no air spaces. It's just like planting a tree in wet cement and expecting it to survive. So after I made my aluminum oxide, I thought I was done with my oven, but I was thinking about this soil and thinking, ah, it's not going to work for trees. So I'll fire up the oven and we'll take this outside and we'll make it into, you know, hopefully some nice particles to crush up into bonsai soil. The temperature in the room has gone up to 29 degrees Celsius and 77% humidity. So any excuse to go outside in the sunshine, I'll take it. I'm ready to add my Mars cement to the tray, so I'll do that. I think I can fit it all in one tray here. It does smell a lot like cement. Okay. I'll just spread that around better. Last year at this time is one of the coldest days of winter. And this year, it's really warm out. I'm just out here in a sweater and it's really comfortable. Amazing difference. Okay, I think our our mud pie is ready. All right, here I go. I preheated the oven a little bit. There. So we'll turn it up now to, I guess 400, 450, somewhere around there. 450. See what happens. Starting to get some steam from the oven. The mixture has been cooking for about 15 minutes so far. Let's go in and have a look at it. There it is. Looks like it's getting pretty hard. Definitely like cement, that's for sure. All right, we'll let it cook even longer. My plan is just to keep cooking this stuff until it stops smoking, and then I'll bring it inside and we'll have a look at it and see what we've got. After about 45 minutes, the oven isn't smoking anymore, so I'm gonna move it into the back porch where it's out of the wind for its final cooking. It'll get up to a really nice high temperature. The oven's in the back porch now. Not a lot of smoke coming from it. I, I think I'll leave it for another 10, 15 minutes and that'll be it. It's been another 15 minutes. Everything's looking good in there. I think I'll turn the oven off. And let it cool down. Hi everyone, we're back indoors. I brought my my Mars soil in. It's now 30.6 degrees Celsius in here and 49% humidity. If I was in here misting and that, the humidity would go way up, but I'm gonna keep it low until I'm finished this video. So here's the soil, I brought it in and it's still very warm. So it's holding its heat really well. Like I, it's been half an hour and I can just barely touch the surface of it. It's so hot still. 
if I tap it, it sounds like a ceramic tile or a, a clay pot actually. This pile of rubble here was when I was scraping the spoon off. I just kind of made some blobs with it. So I'm going to test how strong it is by crushing it with pliers. Let's just see what it's like. So here's a chunk. Oh, it's quite brittle. It, yeah, it, it crumbles apart quite easily and turns to a dust. Don't know if I can break that with my hand. Yeah, you can sort of crumble it with your hand. I'm looking for particle sizes about like that for the final soil mixture. The next thing I want to test is if it absorbs water at all. So let's try that. I'll get a spoonful of water. Actually not a spoonful, just a little bit. Like that. And I'll put it on top here and we'll see if it soaks in or if it just runs off. Definitely soaks in. Did you see that? So that's good actually for our clay particles in the soil. It uh, means it'll have some water retention. Now the next thing to test is if that area soaked by water still remains hard or if the soil will break back down into a powder. So I'll test it. Let's get the spoon here. Still hard as a rock. So this is looking promising. This is uh, all the properties I want in soil. My next step is I have to get it out of this pan and break it up into, you know, one eighth inch or three to four millimeter particle sizes and put it in this bucket to hold my soil. So I'm not sure. Ooh, it's really warm underneath still. I, I, I can't touch it. Like I can touch it quickly, but I wouldn't be able to hold it with my hand. It's, it's quite warm. I'm really holding its heat well. So I'll have to let it cool. Um, I'll put it on top of this so I can get a little more airflow around it or something. I don't know. Put it up there. We'll let it cool down some more. I've been working on my Curiosity Mars rover. So here it is. It's all done. I'll set it right here. It's actually on the surface of the Mars simulant now. Yeah, so I weathered it quite heavily. Um, on Mars, it does get covered in Martian dust. And then it has what's called a clearing event where the winds, like a little um, eddy or tornado, mini tornado will come by and it'll blow all the dust off it and clean it and then it'll get all dusty again in another dust storm. So it's always going through this cycle of getting all dirty and then clean and dirty again. Yeah, so right now it's quite heavily weathered and I used a lot of uh, iron oxide color to match, you know, the color of the soil. I did do some detail work on my Curiosity Rover. I got some bonsai wire and I bent it up for the uh, heating tubes. These heating tubes around the reactor, which is, uh, you know, has radioactive decay, which heats up the surrounding area. So then uh, they pump fluid through these tubes all over the rover to keep it warm on those really cold minus 200 degree days. There's kind of a low angle shot of the soil. It looks, you know, quite realistic. It kind of matches the photographs of the surface of Mars. It's uh, Kind of amazing to have a similar substance. Probably the closest I'll ever get to touching Mars soil. There's a close-up of the Mars soil. Some rocks. Still very warm. I can't believe how much it's holding the heat. It's been a good uh, at least 45 minutes since I took it out of the oven. It's still quite warm. I'll try and get the soil into the bucket now so try and do a little wow it's really tough um, there's some crumbling there got some chunks I 
I think it's going to lift out in one piece. And foil's a little bit stuck on the bottom, but I think I can get it all off. Hopefully. Maybe I should go into Martian pottery or something. Okay, let's um, try and get some more of this into our bucket, some of these crumbly bits. I'll try and break a chunk off. There we go, it breaks quite easily. Yeah, you can break it with your hands quite easily like that like clay hopefully it won't all go mushy when I water this the soil oh. yeah it's kind of breaks into a powder too it's not a real you know I think I'm gonna get a mix of a fine powder and some coarser rocks there's some iron oxide in that piece. Yeah, so it's like a really low quality clay. Almost like, you know, a really bad terracotta or something. Still quite warm too. Hot stuff. You can see that fine dust that would settle on the Curiosity rover. Blow up in the atmosphere. So there's kind of the particles I'm looking for. You know, chunks like that. What I'll do with these smaller particles here, I'll put some in a, a tub and I'll add water to it and just see if they break down with water. Here's my water here. So I'll add some water and so there's the watery mixture in there. I'll see if they uh, break down in the water or I'll see if they maintain their particles which would be good to keep air gaps so the roots can grow in those nice air spaces. So I'll leave that sit for a while. I can't believe how red my hands are. They don't smell like much. But uh, yeah, they're really nice red color, that's for sure. I've got my tray all cleared. I've got all my particles in the bucket here. So I'll work on breaking those down now. I'll have to uh, maybe, you know, bring one out at a time and... Try and break it apart like that. I don't know. Maybe use pliers would be better. Yeah, that's easier. And just kind of break it into chunks. As I said, you know, I'm looking for that particle size, you know, three to four millimeters or about an eighth of an inch. Some's going to go finer and some will be coarser, but uh, that'll be what I'm shooting for anyway. Now let's check in on that. The ones I have soaking in water. I guess they're okay. They're not the strongest particles in the world, but uh, I think they'll be okay. I mean, it will break down the soil, but I don't think really quickly. I think it'll maintain some air gaps in the soil and, you know, let water and fertilizer, oxygen, and that flow through the soil. Okay, that's pretty good for that chunk, I think. Start on this one. Oh, I can feel the heat inside this chunk still. Looking more like the surface of Mars all the time. They think the soil on Mars has a lot of water in it. Um, they've noticed on the Curiosity rover's legs that water condenses on it. So as it goes through the heating and cooling cycle of night and day, it gets water condensing on the legs. So there must be a lot of uh, water in the soil. 
I've noticed um, if I have a bonsai tree outside and it goes below freezing, it looks like the soil is really dry. Um, and I think that's what the surface of Mars is like. Uh, it looks really dry, but it's probably not. It's probably quite moist, the soil. It's just frozen. I've also noticed in winter time, some of the fields, when you get really cold days, it dries the surface, you know, um, if the sun's shining, it kind of freeze dries the surface of soil. And you can see in some of the farmer's fields that dust blows, just like on Mars. It uh, blows all across the snow and it's a very, very fine powder. So I imagine Mars to be very similar, you know, very cold, but a lot of moisture in the soil. That's just frozen. And all that dust that blows around is just like the dust in a farmer's field in the middle of winter. I'm just guessing, but uh, that's what I imagine. I mean, Mars is super, super cold. It, highest it gets is about plus 10 at the equator. So, you know, most of the time everything's permanently frozen and certainly, you know, it wouldn't warm up in the day much from the sun because the sun's not as bright on Mars. I think it's like half the strength as it is on Earth. It's looking really good. It looks like bonsai soil, like lava rock or something. You can see when the soil was all compacted together, when I was like cement, and it just nicely filled this tray. But now with all the air particles, or the, you know, all the space between all the particles, I'll get quite a volume of soil out of this in the end, I think. The particles in the water are still maintaining their size. I'll just scoop some out here. You can see them there. Yeah, so far anyway. At least they're not turning to like a total slime when they get wet, which is, that would be the worst thing to have happen. You want them to kind of maintain their structural integrity when they get wet, at least to a certain degree anyway. I may put a layer of pumice or something underneath the Martian soil as a drainage layer to kind of fill my tray up a bit more. So I'll have the Martian soil on top. That'll be a good test to see if the roots grow in the Martian soil. And it'll also be a good test to see if they prefer growing in the pumice. If I was making a diorama for a model, for a model contest, I would sure use this method to create my Martian, you know, terrain because you know, it looks like realistic Martian rocks. Got those layers in them. Build a nice Curiosity rover to go on it. Yeah, looks uh, quite convincing as a Mars terrain, especially if I put, you know, fine dust to fill in all the crevices and everything. The Martian soil is all done. It's looking pretty good. Um, it still has a little bit of heat in it. Especially when I was getting some of those bigger chunks out. They were quite warm still. Uh, the particles in the water. Doing quite well. I, I don't think they're getting any mushier or anything. So I think the, you know, the Martian soil is not going to break down with water. At least not in the short term anyway. My next task will be to get the greenhouse ready. It doesn't have any drainage holes in the bottom, so I'll have to melt some in. I'll warm up a soldering iron and just make a row of holes in the bottom so it can drain well. I've melted the drainage holes in the bottom of the pot now, so you can see that. So I'm going to add perlite in the bottom. I was gonna use pumice, but I think I'll use something cheaper like perlite for this project. Um, I'll fill it up. I don't know how much actual Mars soil I'll have. I'll probably, you know, have a layer this thick of Mars soil, but the rest will have to be, you know, this perlite underneath. The dust from this perlite isn't good to breathe in. So I'll hold my breath. I think there's a rip tab here. Yeah. Right here. 
and I'll start to fill the bottom of the greenhouse here. I don't need any drainage screens because my holes aren't that big in the bottom of the pot here. That didn't make very much dust at all, actually. That's good, probably because it's so humid in here, maybe. I don't know. Yeah, the cats agree. Okay, I'm thinking I'm going to need a little more perlite. I think that's looking good there. I think that's going to give me a good layer of marsh soil on top. And hopefully the roots are like growing in the marsh soil. I guess we'll see. Okay. Next step is to put the marsh soil on top of the perlite. All right. Here I go. I can still feel a bit of heat in there. I mix it up so I don't get all the big chunks in one area and all the fine powder in another. I'll try and distribute it fairly evenly. Looks like all the dust is on the top now. Which is good, that's how it would be on Mars. There we go. Now I've got to spread it around. I use my spoon for that. So not a really thick layer on top here. But hopefully enough. I guess I would have needed to make, you know, 20 times the amount of soil I did, which would be almost impossible. It would take way too long. I'd have to buy all the ingredients. I'll put the Curiosity Rover on top and see how it fits. It fits pretty good that way. Not too bad that way either. Put it down somewhere back here and Maybe grow our plants here. Put the dome on, see how that goes. I've got the rover inside the Mars greenhouse. The only thing left now is to plant some trees. I've thought a long time about what kind of trees to plant in the Mars greenhouse. There's trees that have nitrogen fixing nodules on their roots, which would introduce nitrogen into the soil. There's trees that can survive extreme cold temperatures, which would be suitable for maybe some of the first trees to grow on Mars. Um, there's trees that grow in the desert environment that can grow in really poor soils. That would also be interesting to plant. Um, so I have to think, this is sort of simulating what it would be like to grow plants indoors in a controlled environment on Mars using Martian soil. So. It would, temperature wouldn't be a factor for this experiment and neither would thin air or anything like that. It would be a normal earth type air. So I'm going to lean towards trees that grow in really poor soil, which should be my Martian soil. So uh, I've got a collection here. I've got a aloe vera plant, a little one. I've got a desert rose here and I've got a collection of jades here. And there's a crown of thorns at the back. So they're all trees that I think would grow well in this greenhouse in a really poor soil. The other advantage of the trees that I picked here is I have them on hand and they're fairly cheap trees to buy. I don't want to put really expensive bonsai trees in this Martian soil just in case the experiment doesn't work out. I'm going to look around and see if I have any other varieties of trees that I think would grow well in this soil. Um, maybe I'll try some seeds also. So I'm going to wait until tomorrow to resume this project. It's starting to get a little late at night. So I was hoping to get all my trees planted in this part six, but uh, I guess there'll be part seven coming up. I hope you enjoyed this video. 
and I hope you have a great year in 2019. I'm Nigel Saunders. Thanks for joining me in the Bonsai Zone.